It is the ultimate robot fighting series. BattleBots is in its 10th season and airs on the Discovery Channel. This is where techies rule. All right, there you go. There's the first sparks. Dozens of teams from around the world design, build, and program their fighting machines. BattleBots is the Super Bowl of competitive robotics, where the goal is to beat, smash, and crush your opponents. There you see Huge back it up, trying to make a run at Hydra. Jonathan Schultz heads up Team Huge, named for his exceptionally large robot, which tops off at 250 pounds. That's the weight limit for all contestants. It's just hard to get all the parts together, and the robot's so big it doesn't fit through doors. But what kind of damage can it do to Huge? Huge is about 40 inches tall, so about belly button height. Uh, and then I want to say somewhere around six to seven feet wide. Um, because sticking out from the wheels is these metal poles uh, that then they keep it from falling over on its side, basically. What are people going to say when they walk up and see that? It's going to say, oh my god, it's huge. Jonathan is from Wilton. He now lives in Connecticut. He and his team have appeared on Discovery's BattleBots for three seasons, winning Best Design the first year. Usually it's innovation or it's technical prowess. Um, and in our case, it was very innovation. It was huge, it was a very new idea. Um, a technical prowess, we hand cut the wheels with a jigsaw and it's not very technically impressive. Rusty had a little pep in his step. Kenny, the flow, Florian, is one of the commentators of BattleBots. Florian is a retired professional mixed martial artist who competed in the UFC and serves as a sports commentator for other networks. Looking at all the different um, robots, I, I think you also need to talk about the art of it as well. I, I think it's a, it's a beautiful uh, balance of art and science. All of a sudden, it, it's pretty cool to be the nerd. It's pretty cool to, to learn about these amazing things and, and be a part of this process. Ken Florian says Jonathan and his teammates quickly became fan favorites. They had a powerful weapon. They had an impressive looking robot. Uh, and I feel like everyone just kind of fell in love with uh, Huge, not only because of its size and its uniqueness, uh, but also the fact that it was, it was very destructive as a robot and did a lot of damage and uh, entertained a lot of fans because of it. Anyone who can build a fighting machine can apply. There have been contestants as young as 11 years old, engineers from NASA facing off against college teams. Ken says the playing field, though, is more even than you would think. Even if you have a bunch of experience as an engineer in, let's say, another discipline, uh, the BattleBots competition is, is a completely different beast. And um, we've seen a, a lot of teams, uh, young teams or young competitors, young drivers, do extremely well and defeat a lot of these uh, engineers that are from these backgrounds like NASA and have these you know, military contracts and government contracts. So um, it, it, it's really cool to see that. Brandon Zelinsky's team is based in Hudson. His robot is named P1. In racing, when you're in first place, you're P1. Brandon's college teammates are scattered across the country as well as Europe, which makes building the machine in New Hampshire a bit challenging. When it comes to like actually putting it together, when you're welding and grinding and, and in the thick of it, that's when it gets hard. Each round is three minutes. If a robot is unable to move for 10 seconds, it's considered knocked out. If both robots survive, a panel of judges makes the final decision. Brandon explains, waiting for your turn inside the arena can often be more nerve-wracking than the actual fight. The procedure before the fight is you, you, you take your robot over to the battery tent, you put your batteries in your robot, you test your robot, you make sure your drive works, you make sure your weapon works, and then you move on into the weighing area, you weigh your robot, make sure that you're under the 250 pound weight limit, and then you put it against the wall and you just wait. Huge could catch one of those arms and rip it off. The teams build their robots to withstand a fierce battery. Make no mistake, these are not toys. The arena is designed to protect everyone from flying debris. The drivers control their robots from outside the ring. The robots that have spinning weapons, some of the more powerful ones, and it's spinning at 250 miles an hour at the tip, it would be like getting hit by a car going like 30 miles an hour. 
It's pretty crazy. And if you're scoring at home, that shot from Huge is probably a love tap in other fights. The champion team gets a cash prize, but that's not all. And the winner gets the giant nut. Yes. Exactly. It's it's the most coveted uh, trophy in all of combat robotics. It's the the Super Bowl trophy, if you will, of of uh, combat robotics, and um, it's it's a massive trophy. It is very heavy to hold over your head. You got to be very careful, but you know, kind of signifies you know the building that goes into these robots. If we ever won, I don't think uh, I don't know. I, I don't think you'd see me. Uh, for a couple days after the fact, I think I'd be having a pretty good time. Combat robotics, proof that STEM can be fun, educational, and unlike other fights in the ring, no one here gets a black eye. The number of kids in the stands during a non-COVID season when we have fans in the stands, it's got to be half kids, and they're all four or five years old. And, and just getting so interested in robots, engineering, STEM, like... I think it does a lot of, a lot of good to the world.